دایی یه فرصت خوب حالا پشت مدافع خدا داد عزیزی توی دروازه گل گل برای ایران خدا داد عزیزی پاس هم روی زمین گشت سرداراز بود به توی دروازه سرداراز بود گل به نام آزمون به برای ایران بزنه کریم ازداری فرد گل توی هرموزه کریم ازداری فرد درموزه پرتبال باز شد علی دایی صاحب توب توی درموزه ازداری یه شبا حرکت از کچان نجات پرسه برو کچان نجات توی درموزه گل برای ایران Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Gold Bazan. I'm joined by Arya and Samson for this episode. It's going to be a really good episode. How are you doing, guys? My pleasure, Sina. Good to be back on, Sina. Um, it's been a little while since we've talked about the national team, but hopefully we've yeah. got some good things to say today. Yeah, we're back with a an episode I feel like it's really exciting because obviously it's been a while since you know we've played an actual game that matters. Like We've had a few friendlies. So now with this 20, 26-man squad that Skosic has, has given us, um, I think it'd be really good to give a breakdown and kind of see, see how it's going to pan out for the Hong Kong game, which you know, is massively important for our qualification um, going forward. So yeah, I think we should just like jump in because it, there, there is a lot to break down here that I, I'd love to talk to you both about. So yeah, just a bit of information. So he called up 26, 26 people. Um, to the squad last night and it would likely be, be cut to 23 uh, on Monday, the 31st of May. And obviously this is for the Iran Hong Kong game, which is due to be played on the 3rd of June um, in Bahrain. I, I remember we talked about that with Pejman. I remember um, Arya, we're not going to go into the politics of that again, about why that's happened. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But again, uh, it's, it's not, it's not kind of where we're used to playing, but Hong Kong's not used to playing there either, so I don't think that'll be a massive problem for us. Um, obviously, the first time we played them in the group, we we we, we won we won two nil. We were a team. He just didn't make it. We were a team. Just good. One for us. All for the team. Iran. What two dar was it? Two dar was it? We are the first two dar was it. Go for the 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 dar was it. Asmun and Ansif and Sari Farad scored, um, and that was that was such a long time ago, September 2019. Uh, a lot's changed since then, um, but yeah, I think before we jump in, though, um, I want to tell the Golbazan audience, the lovely Golbazan audience, that we're going to be doing a live Twitter space again, um, 30 minutes before the actual match starts. So st- stay tuned on our social media. Um, you'll be able to come on and give some thoughts before the game, some questions, and we'll answer them in that moment. Uh, we, we really enjoy doing them, so thank you for so much for staying tuned in, uh, for those. Let's talk about the key additions to the squad, because obviously last time we talked on the episode about who didn't make it into the squad. I think Saeed as a Tolai, he was a big, a big omission before. He's back in the squad now. Um, Adia, what's kind of changed? Like, why do you think he's back in the squad now? Yeah, I mean, look, he's he's played very, very well uh, this past month. He scored uh, three goals. He's had an assist. He's been very, very uh, um, important for his team staying up in the Danish uh, Super League. So for him, um, that this month of, of game time has been vital for this selection, I think, for the national team. Um, and obviously, I think it was almost as if he by not being selected for the last camp was a big um you know big boost for him mentally you know some players would have would have hidden and kind of um went back into their own shell but he's able to use it as a platform to improve uh, and get back into the national team which he has done and he deserves it and i think that he should be a starting player for us now that you know we'll come on to it, of course later on but now that you don't have the likes of Ali Karimi and and Omid Ibrahimi, who are both out of the squad, so you know it's a big chance for him now to to get more more playing time in a national team jersey. Yeah, no, definitely agree. He's been playing really well in the Danish league, um, and yeah, I, I can't wait to see him against Hong Kong. I did forget to mention we did have a short segment with Tobias Zusa from Offside.hk. 
uh, Hong Kong podcast, football podcast. So that will come later in the episode about, you know, what they think about the game, how they're feeling and all of that stuff. Um, but other, other people in the squad that weren't in the squad before, uh, Jao Bash obviously makes a return. And I think what's interesting is that the last time he actually played in an Iran shirt was, uh, as it was against Hong Kong in 2019. Um, and then we had, we had we've also got Saman Rudos, uh, Albert Zadeh, Porali Ganji, and Kaveh Rezai, but like all pretty big players um, coming into the squad now. Um, so Samson, what do you, what do you make of those people coming into the squad now? I think I think it'll be a massive boost. Yeah, and we've seen uh, Johan Baksh get uh, a lot more minutes the last few weeks, haven't we? With Brighton, um, I just uh, I mean they haven't really amounted to much. Finished off the season with a uh, with a, a loss, I believe. Um, but for Johan Bosch, it, it's it's really it, it's been a game of whether he can get the playing time in his club and can stay fresh because of that and get back in into uh, really the the playing shape of being a starting man, which is really the opposite uh, issue for all of all the other main starters because they've been playing their entire season. So we, we're worried about them making sure that they are not out of gas and can uh, can persist on through these uh, matches that we have coming up. Uh, and it's a different story for Jahan Bach. So I'm, I'm really optimistic about, um, you know, him feeling good and ready to play. Uh, I, I know that he is very headstrong and, and will be uh, determined to prove himself back with the national team. Um, and you know, I can, I can only hope that he can, that he gets to do that because as you mentioned, it's been gosh, over a year and a half guys. Uh, so, so, you know, you can tell that there's a lot of hunger with him. Uh, as far as the other, uh, main guys, uh, guys, if I'm not mistaken, we haven't, uh, heard the names of, of, uh, Toravi and, and Amiri very often with the team. I, I know Toravi, uh, he's kind of been in the, in the, in, in the shadows a bit and, and he's back. Uh, Ari, you want to talk on that? Yeah. I mean, he's back as well. Uh, he's not had a game for the national team in a long time through injuries and, and various other problems that he's had, um, you know, going to Qatar and whatnot. But for him, I think it's a case of, does he have what it takes to get into this squad over the likes of Jahan Baksh and Kodos and Goye D and all these kind of players because as I said before, as um, Samson said, Sina said before, this squad is a preliminary squad, so it, it will get cut down. And it most likely will get cut down to 23 players. Um, we suspect it would be 26, but from what I'm hearing now is they will try to take 23 from this 26-man um, squad. So he could be one of those guys who gets cut from this, which is a shame for him, but I, I I think it, it speaks to the the lack of um, um, really high quality match that he's matches that he's had over the last two years um, hasn't gone to Europe. That's been a big problem for him in his career, and I think that's probably why he would struggle to make the squad. But you never know; you never know he might make it. Yeah, no, I think I think with Torabi, he certainly has got the quality to play in Europe. I feel like he needs to play at a higher level to actually cement himself into this squad because if you're competing against the likes of Jaron Bash, even though there's question marks over his playing time, I still think, you know, if it's a player that, that plays in Europe and even, even though he doesn't play that regularly, it still trumps him. Um, he, he needs to start playing in Europe. Otherwise, he'll always, he'll always be in this position of, oh, maybe making it into the squad or maybe not making it into the squad. Obviously, we'll talk about that a bit later when we talk about the wingers. Um, but then, okay, we'll talk about the omissions. Obviously, there's, there's a few players out from in, injury, uh, like Syed Manesh. I think that's probably going to be a big loss for us. I, I really like him as a player, especially as a substitute. He's, he's really explosive, um, you know, massively important to the team. Obviously, we've got Ali Karimi and uh, Nur Afghan out from injury as well. Um, kind of big losses, but our injury list isn't that big, which is a, which is a massive positive, I'd say. What do you think, Arya? Yeah, it's good that we don't have any of the sort of key players injured, you know, the guys who are starting for us, you know. Um, it's really, really good, especially that we've got back uh, Moharami. Uh, it's very important that we got him back because, you know, Ramin Rezaian's out of the national team picture now and we need a right back, you know. We need someone who's going to be able to cement that position for themselves 
And I think he's the guy to do that. He's been fantastic for Dinamo Zagreb over the last two seasons. And he came back on the last game of the season for them. And he was brilliant. You know, he played, I think it was like 65 minutes and he was really, really strong in that in that performance. So it's good to have him back. And, and also, there's a, um, you know, it seems like a very young squad. Uh, so hopefully we don't have any more injuries, you know, fingers crossed. You know, you really feel for Saeed Manesh because... Uh, he's he's really proven himself, and and you know he's he still remains Team Ali's uh, youngest scored player, if I'm not mistaken, from a few years back. But at the same time, it 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 doesn't look like uh, the offensive production uh, will take that much of a big hit. I mean, guy, I mean, this is the strongest uh, offensive lineup that we can ask for, really. Golizade, um, Gayadi, who has been fantastic in his brief time with. Uh, with Team Mili. You get Hulos back. Um, you get Jahan Bach back, hopefully productive, maybe getting uh, playing time in, in, in the first game. And then, of course, the, the, the four forwards to choose from, Rezaei and Sari Far, Tarimi, Azmu. I mean, are we really missing Syed Minish that much? I mean, I, uh, of course, we really root for his success, but um, it, it's it's not exactly if, – if you had to choose between someone to get injured – um, he's perhaps someone that we would miss maybe a little bit less, right? Yeah, yeah agreed. I, I yeah. totally agree. I think Sad Manish is a great player, but look, he's 19 years old. He's got he's got so much time. He's got so much time. Yeah, agreed. As a substitute, though, I feel like he is on par with the big players. He he is massively explosive. So um, I think obviously he's got loads of time. So we'll we'll definitely see him more in, in a team Melly shirt in the future. Um, but. Arya, you talked about uh, Ramin Rezaian missing out just because of preference. Another huge player who's been who's missed out because of preference as well, um, Omid Ebrahimi, massively massive player. Obviously, like there's other players that have missed out also, but he's probably the the biggest player that's missed out in this selection. Um, Samson, what do you what do you make of that? Are his are his days in Team Melly over now? Is is this is this the last time? You think? We, we're increasingly realizing that we're needing um, a more disciplined and athletic midfield from tra- transitioning from the back up. And I, I never thought he was one of the, the, the quickest guys. He, I mean, he was a relatively intelligent player. But, you know, it, it, when it comes to you know, maybe his time of playing at a higher level in Europe, that's obviously past. So, uh, are, we, are we missing? Uh, are we really missing him that much because of the fact that this is a younger squad, but it's a stronger squad, and they've uh, played fantastic in uh, among the Legionnaire players, and there's rising talent with some of the domestic players that are earning their shots. So, uh, is is this really that much of a, of a loss without him? I mean, he he, he served well in, in in the past, but yeah, yeah, I, I don't. I, I think um, going forward with the next. Um, with the remaining World Cup uh, campaign, uh, if I mean, say if there's injuries, then yeah, I mean, I guess he could step in. But uh, guys, I, guys, I'm not seeing much of uh, uh, really an integral use for him uh, in his yeah. style of play. Are you? I have to, I've got to disagree with that uh, personally because you're saying that we've got a young squad, and you know, and Ryan Me is obviously 33 years old, but he's called up Kamal Kamalbinio, you know, same age. Same position. So for me, um, in my opinion, anyway, Kamal Kamalbinia is not a particularly good player. You know, I don't think he's that good. You know, I don't think he's better than um, Salak, who also plays in Paris Bodies and the same position as him. So for me, also, you look at the last game against Syria, you know, if we're going to go a bit more technical based, look at the last game against Syria when, when Omi De Bruyne came on for Hoi Safi. In that match, we looked a lot better. And that was a game where we struggled to keep possession. And, you know, we were very, very poor, in my opinion, in the midfield. When he came on, he was very, very useful for us in keeping the ball. And he's a player who, you know, last season he was playing in Belgium and he was doing really well. And this season in Qatar, he's doing really well. He's the captain of his team. And I think Omid Ibrahim is a big miss. Personally, I think it's a big miss. And I think if he was in the squad... um, I would have started him. You know, that's that's how important I think he is to the, to the team. I think him and Saeed would have been my two starting midfielders, you know. Um, I wouldn't personally start Ahmad Nurlai or Hassan Hoy Safi. I don't think those two are particularly uh, consistent 
in their approach to the match, but Omid has always been a consistent performer despite his age. I don't think Kamal gives you that. But, you know, it's not... It's not a selection where you're like, okay, it's the worst thing that's happened to the national team, but I think it was a, a big miss in, in the midfield. You think this is a kind of a, a tactical uh, move by Skosic to, to try to maybe get another player to, to show leadership, to step up, one, one of these? No, uh, I don't. Because I think, cause, uh, cause Kamal's the same age as him. I don't, I don't, see, how, I don't see how that works because, first and foremost, if he was replacing Omid with like a younger player, like like for example, if he was replacing Omid Brahimi with Yasin Salmani, who played in Sepan and he's been fantastic in the in the in the in the, in the um, Persian Gulf Pro League, if he was replacing him with a young player like him, I would be like, okay, yes, you're right, Samson. He would he's replacing him because he wants to progress the team. But when you replace him with Kamal Kamyabinya, who is the same age, same position, and he's not particularly good in my opinion. I don't think that shows any progression. I don't think he's asking Kamal to to be the the to be the Ibrahimi in this lineup, though. I mean, he doesn't have the the experience with the national team for that. It would, it would be someone else. I don't know. I, I still disagree. I still don't don't think that he should have been sacrificed for a for a a bunch of players, and especially after we've lost Ali Karimi to injury and and Omidun Afghan to injury. I think he should have been there, especially with the World Cup experience, with the Asian Cup experience, European experience. I think it was a big miss. But look, I think we have good midfielders, you know, regardless. I think Wai Daimiri, Abad and Rulaiz are, are decent players who can do a job for us. But I, think, I, I still believe that Omid Ibrahimi would have been the right option, even despite his age. Yeah, no, I I think that's I think like obviously we'll talk about that more when we when we discuss the midfielders, but I think I think he is pretty a pretty big loss. He he's probably one of our most consistent players, I'd say. And and as a presence, as a as a leader, I mean if if uh Kamal is literally the same age, same position, it's it's not even a ta- tactical change. Like it makes it makes little sense to me. But ob- like we'll talk about that a bit more. Talking about the actual squad itself. So for for the goalkeeper moving moving from the from the back to the front. So for goalkeeper, Berman is the natural number one. But there have been a lot of question marks over his position, his playing time. So who starts who starts goalkeeper for you guys, Samson? I'll start with you. I think it's a matter of strategy uh, at, at this point. I mean, because Berman is obviously proven himself at the national team level at the club level not so much it's the opposite for for, for Amir Abadzadeh he's just been fantastic for Maritimo uh, this year um, I, 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 I you know it depends what level of chemistry that the, the staff really believes that uh, they work with their defenders I think they're both great uh, at a certain point you know sometimes you think of the height advantage that Baron Vaughn has um, is and then uh, you know who's having the better week in practice, and is it really that much of a risk if the attackers and midfielders of the other uh, country that we're playing uh, are not really you know that fantastic outside the box or uh, at the headers or something like that? I mean, I mean what's your, what's your risk assessment? You know, because uh, me personally, guys, I have a lot of confidence in. in in both really yeah i agree i i think you're right in the sense that it's it, it is game by game i think um one of my friends uh brian parsa uh he said to me like last night that obviously there's a guy who has immense confidence um and it's true he does he's a very confident man and so is Bayon Ban. I'm not saying he's not i'm just saying obviously that has very immense confidence in the sense that he's very self-aware um and I think he's the right guy for me anyway to start against a team like Iraq or a team like Bahrain because I think he will get he'll be able to get in the heads of the opponents very easily uh, and be able to you know impose himself on the game. You know we saw against Bosnia when we were playing away from home against Bosnia in the friendly he was unbelievable. I mean he really was. He was really one of his best performances I've seen. Um, and you know I think he's a top goalkeeper. Absolutely. But having said that, Bayon Band for me is a better goalkeeper. You know, despite the confidence, I think, and he might be a little bit short on confidence because he's not playing for Antwerp, 
But I think Bernard Van is the better goalkeeper, for sure. So whoever does start, it doesn't really matter. And Niels Mand is a top keeper as well. So don't, you know, don't thingy on him. Don't say he's not going to, you know, push these guys because he will push them. But he, you know, he won't be starting, but he's a top keeper as well. Do we, do we think uh, Akbari will be the... the odd yeah, yeah, though? yeah. I mean, he's not been called up to national team in a long time. But, you know, he was a guy who Dan Gaspar, who was a goalkeeping coach under Carlos Kiros, um, you know, at the first World Cup, he was a guy who Dan Gaspar really, really liked. And he was in the national team quite a lot. And, you know, he fell off a little bit. You know, he had, he had offers from Europe, but he fell off a little bit. And I'm, I'm glad to see him in. I think he's done well for Turok Tour this season. And he's, you know, he's shown him that he's he's one of the best. I don't think he's better than Mazo Heri, if you're going to go by technicals. I think Mazo is actually injured, from what I heard, um, playing for SL. But I do think he's one of the best keepers that we have in Iran. Um, you know, up there with like Hamid Alak and all these kind of goalkeepers. But ultimately... Ultimately, I think uh, he will get cut. Yeah, I think I think well, if anything, the the competition for goalkeeper is now is really refreshing to see. We haven't had good competition for the goalkeeping position for a while, so it's really good to see. Um, but moving on to defenders, uh, I I actually think we have a pretty strong defending defensive lineup. I'm quite happy with that with our lineup. Like, yeah, it'd be good to see what you guys think. I haven't seen much of the the defenders guys to be to be honest, but. Uh... We 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 are keeping some of the some of the veterans, probably Ganji, um, and Hosseini, of course, from Shabzon Four. I, th- I think Ari, you think he's in the middle of uh, uh, switching clubs at, at the end yeah. of, this, of this club. Yeah. Hopefully, that doesn't affect uh, you know his national team play by any means. But well, I mean, quickly on the centre backs, it's good that Scottish is going with four of the best you know he's not picked another one he said to these guys you know you're, you're my favorite players in that position and I'm, i trust you that's very good that he's done that and at the exact same the four the full the four fullbacks and in my opinion he's called up the eight best defenders that we have in each position you could argue that jafar salmoni isn't a natural left back and he isn't but i don't think that we have you know, I think we, there's some good left backs like Derek Sean Mera, uh, um, Fulad, and um, Abul Faz Jalali was in the last camp, uh, Saipa, um, and a couple of others like you know Muhammad Nadir and all that. But I don't, I don't really think they're they're like they're so good that Jafar Salmani shouldn't be called up because you know he's playing in the Portuguese league, he's getting good training, and he's a decent player. So I'm happy he's in, and then I think Daniel Esmaili Far is a pretty good right back. I, I really do like him. And I think he should have been in the last camp as well. But I'm glad to see him in. I'm glad not to see Sio Um, You know, Milad and Sadeg are great players too. So, no, it's a good it's a good defence. Uh, yeah, Aria, I, I completely agree with you. I think these are the eight best defenders that we have. And I, 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 really, I really like the sort of chemistry. And obviously, like, we have uh, Haj Safi, who could, who could always slot in either right back or left back. Um as he's done before. So I think, I think as a, as a defensive lineup it is pretty strong. Um, I'm, I'm pretty positive about it. I, don't, I remember in the last, last selection, there were a few question marks about the defenders. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, so moving on to the midfielders, obviously this is the part where like we've had a few discussions about already. Uh, obviously we talked about before, say does a he's made the squad again. I'm really pleased to see him back in. Um, I'm not certain whether he'll start or not because, like, I don't know whether Scottish would have the level of confidence to start him. Um, but, yeah, what do you think, Samson? I think he should. He's put in the work, uh, as I tell you, he has. And, you know, say what you will about, you know, being in Denmark, but I think it's a higher, highly impressive golf pro league. Uh, and, and the way his physique, and he's, he's fit. And the last time that he uh, played, you know, he – I'll, yeah, I'll be it back in, uh, I think, <laughs> August or September. Um, or, or was it October? Uh, he, he had that assist against Bosnia. And he just feels comfortable and, and easily uh, molds in with these guys. And, and I, I think when you combine him in the center with someone like Wuli Zadeh or even Kodos, I mean, there's so much potential for just assists, you know, the distribution left and right. And for set pieces, I, I just feel so much confidence in him. And I think it'll be very refreshing to have him back. I hope Skosic agrees. Uh, but I, I think there's a lot of potential with these guys to, to really help generate the, um, 
the uh, the tran uh, the transition from defensive to attacking uh, with the the pace and distribution and, and get some uh, counterattack goals and and really also uh, hog the possession. Uh, I think uh, I think he's a guy who you want. I think starting. Uh, I, I guess maybe Scotius might have him come off the bench, but uh, I'd have someone like him start. Um, I'm curious on what he wants to, what Skosic wants to do with uh, Isan Hasafi, uh, whether he wants to start him as captain as what he has been doing. Um, and I'm also curious uh, what uh, maybe uh, capacity Amiri is, is used in. Yeah, I would agree. Um, for me, Saeed um, is that Allahi and Ali Quli are the have to start? I think those two guys are very important to our team. Um, um, and then I think between Jahan Bash and Gordos, I'm easy with you know one of them starting. You know, I wouldn't go, I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of people online, um, having um Said and then you have in front of him. Um, Golizade, Kutus, and Jahan Bakhsh. Those three, I don't think, can play together in a midfield four. I think it would be too far too attacking when you've got two strikers up front as well. Because, you know, you can't just rely on Saeed to do all the defensive work on his own. It would just be impossible. And then, then, then why is he called up Ahmad Nurullahi and Hoy Safi and Vahid Amiri and Kamal Kamiya So he has to start one of them. You know, and I think Vahid Amiri is probably the right person to start. Um, you know, we know the energy that he has, but Ahmad Nuro is also a decent midfielder. You know, he's not had a great season for Paris Police, but he's a decent midfielder. But I do think that eventually Scotch Age will go with um, Hai Safi um, because he's the captain. You know, I don't think he should start, but I think he will. Um, and, you know, for me, you know, I'll you know, come to the strikers in a minute, but for me, Ayadi is a fantastic, fantastic sub that we can bring on because he's got the pace, the skills, the shooting ability. I think he would cause a lot of issues when when the games get a little bit more leggy and you know a bit more jaded because he has the ability to unlock defenses. I don't think he's the guy who should be starting the games, especially the two games against Bahrain and Iraq. I just don't think he has the, the physicality to start matches at the moment, but to come on in the second half, you know, and, and also we have five substitutes. Don't forget that you know you don't have to always start with your most attacking players. You can always bring on players. So, Goyedi is a player who definitely would come on and impact the game in the second half. And I think it, it seems like, you know, hopefully, if they all stay fit, it could be a very strong, strong team. I I, I was about to say the same thing, Ari. I, I love the aspect of, of having Goyedi uh, as a sub. And I, I just feel like after watching him in those last two friendlies and and you know, seeing what he can he can do in the in in uh, in the domestic league in Iran, I I just think, man, I gotta see this guy score a volley in, in the last twenty minutes against Bahrain or against Iraq. You know, just just you know, hopefully rather. I mean, by the, we already it, saw it against Bosnia. I know, you know? I know, I, I know. <laughs> that's exactly what he's done. I'm like, bro, I gotta see him do that against these teams, man. I, I like, th- like just make a statement like that. I got to see him do that, man. You know, really, like, this is his time to really shine when he comes off the bench in that kind of capacity. You know that he's a guy that can they can do that for us. And also, just very quickly, because I think people have obviously have noticed this, he's the only SWL player in this list, you know, and I think that people are maybe a little bit upset about that, especially the SWL fans. And I can understand that, you know. But let's be honest, he is the best SWL player. There's no doubt about that. And SWL, you know, ultimately... If I'm going to be critical of their team, they haven't had the best season. You know, you can say things haven't gone their way, you know, refereeing decisions and whatnot. But look, it's just, it is what it is. You know, we have to accept it for what it is. But is there, you know, and he's representing that club. And I know there's five press bodies, but I understand that. But we have to accept it. You know, we have to go and, and support the national team. You know, all that goes out the window. You know, the, all this SLR press body stuff has to go out the window. We have to be supporting of the national team. Guys, we talked about midfielders, and I was going to save the, the actual lineup for, you know, a bit later after we talk about the forwards. But I feel like our midfield's got the most quality out of all the team. So who, like, I don't know, how, how are you going to structure the midfield? I feel like that's really going to be important for us in this game and, and in the future, of course. So how are you guys going to structure it? For for me personally, I think that we have to go with 
um, three in the midfield. You know, I think we've always played better when we've had three across midfield. Um, you know, th- when I say three, I don't mean like just three. I mean, I mean three with an attacking midfielder uh, or three with two wingers, you know. Um, so technically five, you know, if we're going to go back with, with the wingers. But for me, Saeed should always be the deepest one. Um, someone with always physicality and height should be always the deepest. Then I think you should have um, like a box-to-box midfielder. So like a Vahid Amiri or Ahmad Nurlahi or, or whatever and next to him for the energy. And then I would have someone like Jahan Bash or Godus as the kind of um, the link between him and Koizadeh as the more advanced player. You know, so I would always have Koizadeh as the more advanced player with Kotus, Jan Baksh, a little bit more deeper, just kind of as a link and then box to box and then a deep, a deep sort of defensive midfielder. But for me, I think we have to play with Osmond and Tarami up front. You know, we have to. We can't, we can't really drop them. And, you know, there was before we used to have Tarami as a left winger. For me, he shouldn't really play as a left winger. He can always move there within the game, but for me, he should always play as a striker next to Osman. And that's pretty much what he's done with Porto, right? Yeah, he's played as, as, a, as yeah. a you know with uh, Marega out front. Yeah, yeah, I I would I would stay uh, I would stay with Wolizade uh, starting uh, just because of he's really held held that midfield together in, in the last team league games. Um, you know, I, I think they just the midfield really gels well when he's starting, and I think uh, we should really just you know continue with that, um, especially you know, to continue momentum from doing well in the friendlies under Skosic. Uh, and, and he's obviously always been uh, productive. I would, I would keep Jahan Baksh where he has succeeded with Tim Lee. Uh, you, you know, I, I don't think anything's changed with their comfort level uh, compared to what they've been doing with their club. Um, so I, I think if it's, not, if it's not broke, don't fix it, you know. Um, but other than that, yeah, Arya, same here. All right, yeah, okay, cool. Let's move on to the forwards, as you kind of alluded to, Arya, because we got we got obviously a really strong midfield, a really strong, you know, wing as well. For me, I completely agree with you. Asmon and Tarami both have to start, and they both have to play as strikers. I don't want to put Tarami on the wing. Like, he's less potent on the wing. Like, in the Champions League, Porto, their biggest threat was Tarami playing in the middle. Obviously, they had, like, Sergio Oliveira as well behind, but... Tarami was wreaking havoc. That's where I feel like he's the most, you know, the most powerful. And obviously, uh, Asman's been playing, you know, as a striker, you know, forever. So, yeah, I think I think our forwards are really strong as well. I think it's just the just the balancing act of getting our midfielders, wingers, and forwards in the correct positions to not overcommit. I feel like that's where our danger might lie with with this lineup. What do you think, Samson? Yeah, I, I think we have to. You have to have a, a, a solid balance, but at, at the same time, you know, th- these are smart players, and, and guys, we have to realize we, this has to be the strongest midfield attack scheme in all of Asia, uh, with the exception of what maybe maybe Japan. I mean, guys, th- these guys have to realize that you know what kind of power, star power that they really have in terms of being able to move the ball and set up these plays. You know, you can't help but to be optimistic that they're, they're going to score some goals and they have to score some goals. Uh, but, I mean, we, we get so lost in sometimes some, some of the negative results that have happened uh, that we, we forget that, you know, for the better part of a decade, albeit with Kairos, uh, you know, Team Millie really was the, the superior team in Asia. And, you know, those players have only gotten better. This is the This is the best set of players that – uh, Iran has had, you know, best set of goalie, best set of attackers for sure, um, best set of fullbacks. So, I, I mean, you know, really the sky's the limit. These these guys have to realize that, you know, they, they can really feed off of each other by supporting each other back and then moving up together as long as they don't get selfish. I, I mean, I, I don't think there's any reason to not think uh, these four games, these guys can't score three goals per game. Yeah, I would agree. I think that, look, Osman Tarami, you know, two of the best strikers in, in Europe, you know, they are. They are it's two of the best strikers in Europe. Um, there's no doubt about that. You know, they're, they're scoring a high percentage of goals 
and creating a high percentage, and they're also scoring for the national team. That doesn't not not every striker does that. Not that's very rare actually to ha- to see that happen. You know, regularly, it's not that common. So they are two of the best in the world or in Europe, whatever you want to call it. So we have to be proud that we have these players in the national team. Um, and you know, don't forget Cover Azoy and, and Ansari Fard. They're both very good strikers. They, they both they both scored in our last friendlies. Um, we know they're very very potent as well. They can always come on and score goals. So I'm very happy with this team. Like, I'm not upset with it. Other than the Omi De Brahimi thing, I'm quite happy with it. And also, Arya, Usman and Tarami, another rare thing is that they actually work well together. Like, as a duo, I feel like the chemistry Absolutely. is pretty high. Like, that's quite rare as well. Yeah, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not common. You know, as people might take it for granted, but it's not common that we have two strikers at a top, top level playing for top, top teams, you know, you know, and they're scoring a high number of goals, you know, so... Listen, this is this is a good chance for us to progress and, and hopefully, hopefully, you know, get into the next round of the qualifiers. You guys, we're not asking them to climb a mountain here, okay? They've already put in great work against formidable opponents in their club team. We're only asking them to play play as a unit and execute against Hong Kong, against Bahrain, against Cambodia, and then Iraq. You know, we're not asking them to uh, go out and, and battle against Portugal and Spain. Okay, this isn't the same fight. It's it's the fight to get things back on track now that there isn't really a toxic locker room. You now that there's not a toxic coaching staff. Uh, so you know, you have to have a good bit of faith that they can get this done. Because yeah, sure, Iran has dug itself a hole, but you know, let, let's not just you know uh, scream bloody Mary. You know, this is a very uh, formidable uh, and doable task that we are asking of these guys. And as long as they don't overwork themselves because of the, the long club season and, and tire themselves or, or, um, or injure themselves before the game, it, you know, just, just stay smart, stay the course, and, you know, these results will come, right? That, that is, is that not overall the mentality that we should be having to not be, to not sit back, but also, uh, not think that we have to kick the ball 80 yards down the field out of desperation every single possession, right? Yeah, completely agree. Um, you talked about, obviously, Hong Kong. Uh, we've obviously got our thoughts on the game, our thoughts on the lineup. I think before we move on to predictions, lineups, all that good stuff, I think we should go to... Uh, Arya spoke to Tobias Zuza from Offside.hk, a Hong Kong football podcast. So... Let's see what he has to say. Uh, Tobias, how you doing, my friend? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming on. So just speak to us about your, your podcast that you also do. Or not, you do a thing, you do two podcasts. Just give us a little bit of background about them. Oh, yeah. So um, I'm a co-host at the Hong Kong Football Podcast. Uh, we, have, we have been running this for a couple of years now on a bi-weekly basis, covering all what's going on in the local league, the Hong Kong Premier League, which is a professional league in Hong Kong, but also... Uh, education whenever the Hong Kong representative team is playing. Uh, Hong Kong is not a nation, right? So the politically correct term uh, here is Hong Kong representative team. Um, yeah, and other than this, I, I'm also doing the offsite.hk uh, website. Um, so we, on this, we're also like just covering local football uh, news, transfer news, uh, all the big matches that are happening. And yeah, so that, that keeps me busy um, in my free time. Uh, we have on Twitter, we are on Offsite uh, HK, and uh, my personal Twitter handle is uh, Du Venture, um, which is like a, a Chinese synonym, but uh, yeah, just Offsite HK, uh, where you can find all the, the latest. Um, obviously, there's a match between Iran and Bahrain on the 3rd um, of June. Can you give us your, your thoughts on the match and also give us a little bit about um, the squad that have been called up for Hong Kong? Right. So uh, with regards to the squad, uh, uh, right away we could see that a lot of uh, crucial players are missing, mainly because uh, the best players in Hong Kong are currently playing in mainland China and they have not been re- released by their clubs. Uh, they can do this according to FIFA regulations right now because of the, the quarantine um, that uh, the players would uh, be required to undergo. 
So this would include players like Tanchun Lok, who is probably the, the best uh, player at the moment in the team, uh, uh, a midfielder, a defensive midfielder, um, but also a center back like Leung Nok Hang or Andy Russell. So they are all not available. Uh, that said, there are a couple of new exciting call-ups into, into the team because uh, Hong Kong, of course, is relying a lot on naturalized players who have been in Hong Kong for um, so foreign players who have been in Hong Kong for uh, seven plus years who are then eligible to get the Hong Kong passport. Um, so there are, there are now uh, a couple of new ones, uh, including uh, Fernando, who is a very strong uh, winger, um, uh, has kind of reached his peak already in, in, the, in the last few years. Um, and then, of course, the, the usual suspects like Sandro, who is a very good striker, Brazilian born, but who has played for Hong Kong before. Um, and a new, uh, relatively young player for Hong Kong, Matthew Orr, who is like a, a half Hong Kong um, uh, um, born uh, player. And uh, yeah, he will also make his debut uh, for Hong Kong. But altogether, it's not the, the strongest squad for the team. Yeah, and obviously, um, the last game we played, you guys, uh, all the way back in 2019, finished 2 0 uh, to Iran. And um, you know, it was a tough game from 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 what we could see. You know, it, it looked like a strong team overall, gave us some problems. Um, however, um, how do you think the game will go this time around? I do believe it's a very different situation, uh, especially for um, uh, Hong Kong. I have noticed that, for instance, Iran they they are like in the middle of preparations. They have been doing this also quite seriously. For Hong Kong, there's been no preparation whatsoever. The team hasn't really met for um, now almost one and a half years. Basically, since December 2019, they have not played or also not trained together. Um, so I, I don't think that they are like in in very good shape. They're also coming off a very tiring season, um, which just ended last weekend as well, and. Uh, all, all together, right? Also, not many players seem to really um, see uh, there is still a great opportunity for Hong Kong as well. Uh, so I don't think that it'll, it will be taken hugely serious, um, and uh, they might even just be worried about getting in and getting out of Hong Kong in the first run. Uh, so I think back then in 20, 2019, um, there was a bit of a special vibe in Hong Kong as well because uh, a lot of fans came into the stadium and and the team really had a had a kind of a quite um, good fighting spirit, uh, but given that, uh, of course, the the game this time is played uh, in Bahrain and uh, on on um, more or less neutral ground, but um, also for given the, the depleted squad, I, I I think it's a much tougher game this time for Hong Kong, and I don't see, uh, to be honest, much chance for them. Um, of course, the, the the tactics will be the same. I think damage control for as long as possible. But uh, the danger will then start when, when the first goal come in, when, when they start to concede, uh, and then they would need to open up. Um, but I think for the entire match, they, they will try to just um, yeah, hope for some counter attack and then um, yeah, uh, try to, to get a lucky punch uh, on the break. Yeah, for sure. Um, and what do you think your prediction is for the match then? Um, to be honest, I do think it will be very one-sided. I would hope for one goal for Hong Kong, but altogether, I, I think it will be a very comfortable win for Iran. So maybe a 4-1 or a 5-1 uh, should be on the cards. Perfect. Thank you very much for coming on, Golbazan. Thanks for having me. Okay, guys. So we heard from we heard from Tobias. Now let's hear a quick, you know, we spoke about the, the formation a little bit in the midfield and the attack. What are your predictions? What would you want to see for the formation, for the lineup, uh, for this game? Before we move into predictions, are you? Yeah, for me, I think for me, we can we could probably rest some players in this game. You know, the first game against Hong Kong, we didn't struggle. I said I was saying to Tobias, you know, in that little segment, we didn't we didn't struggle, but we didn't have we didn't find it very easy either. You know, we only beat them two 0 um, we did have a couple of chances created against us as well. So, you know, they're not a bad side. Uh, and as Tobias said, you know, although they are struggling for some preparation, they have brought in some new players. So you never know what they can what they can do. However, I do think it's a good chance to maybe start some players like IID, um, you know, some players like, um, for example, Jafar Salmoni, you know, because Milad Mahamani is actually injured. Milad Mahamani has a small injury. He missed his last game for Ghent. 
So maybe you want to start Jafar Salamone at left back, give him a chance to play in his real position or, or his somewhat real position rather than right back, you know, like they like, like get Syria or maybe even start Ezatullahi again. He's not played in a long time. So it's a good chance to give some players some opportunities to play. Um, hopefully they can do that. Oh, do you want do you want in my lineup? So, you know, is that what you're asking? Yeah, lineup yeah. and formation. All right, so, so, I feel so like, what, yeah, what I would, we need, we need some would, balance. What I would go with, I would probably go with um, Bjorn Van den Goals, just to give him some game time. He's not had a lot of matches recently. I'd actually start uh, Magic Hosseini as well, um, and probably alongside Kanani, uh, just because both of them I don't think are first choice. Uh, I think probably Gan and Kaya are our first choice, but I think those two are very solid. Actually, they played in that game together the first time we played Hong Kong, so could be a good chance for them to do that again. I would also start um, um, Esmaili Farah right back because Moharami is just back from injury, so you don't want to risk him against Hong Kong. Um, and I would actually put uh, Salmoni at left back, so I'd actually go with pretty much a second tier um, back four. Uh, in, mid- in midfield, I'd put Zatolahi. Um, alongside probably probably Hoi Safi or yeah probably Hoi Safi because obviously Hoi Safi is the captain we need that experience you know first game in and then I'd probably have um, Goyedi starting alongside I'd, I'd love to see Godou start this game but Godou will have a game on Saturday so he'll probably miss his first game so I think Goyedi should probably start alongside Goyedi be very very skillful with him alongside the guy ID looks looks like a very uh, strong uh, duo, and then I'd probably have uh, Osmond and me up front together. For the most part, it sounds like a copy of what I have. Uh, I would I would prefer to have uh, the two uh, uh, most informed center backs to really just lay the foundation uh, the first game. If they're not, if there's no question of you know them being hurt or not, I'd, so I, I would have uh, Hosseini and Porle Ganji. Um, j- just to you know, keep the um, I, you know, just keep the uh, discipline down uh, for the center backs um, with uh, Baron Vaughn and goal. Um, again, Team Lee did, did not have any friendlies to prepare for these, so so it's like the Hong Kong it, game is that chance. Plus, it's you know, first match uh, of of these matches being held in Bahrain. You know, Ir- Iran lost the appeal. They're gonna have to deal with it. They're gonna have to deal with Bahrain in their, in their uh, training right now in, in quiche. So you have to lay a little bit of cement to, to get that done. With that being said, of course, uh, Ari, I agree with you with the fullbacks. Ezra Tolaki and Hasafi, uh, I agree with that. And then the other four, I, you, you can kind of be flexible with this. I, I personally would, would start Jahan Bach because he's been starting the last few games. You know, why, you know, why suddenly put him back on the bench? Uh, because I, yeah, you know, I'd agree with that. I'd that's what he's that. been having to do in England. So you know, bring, bring him back. You know, he's not doing anything bad. Let's let's, let's get him and in, 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 uh, back in, in national team form. And this Hong Kong game is a great opportunity to do that. Um, starting Kole Zade, um, Parami. You can kind of have him wider up front. Um, you can do different things with him uh, in, unless I'm proven otherwise. And then as Moon to top it off and. Uh, and uh, as Moon, guys, he's not going to mess up these one-on-ones this time. He, he's going to bury them. Speaking it into existence, make it happen. Yeah, no, I really like those lineups. I, I agree with you, Samson. Definitely. I think uh, Jaron Bash, I think, for me, starts. Someone called us is uh, like, yeah, he, he might play for Brentford on Saturday. He might not. He didn't play in the semifinal of the playoffs. Um, so I don't know whether also the travel I think for him as well because obviously yeah it's the travel I think that's going to be the yeah but I mean it's it's five days out so he has to go straight to Bahrain so he will actually miss the first camp so I don't think yeah. he'll start I don't think he'll start the first game no no I agree all right so we have the we had the the predicted lineups um, what formation was that by the way it was a it was a four two 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 wingers. I would I would go with a four three one two and you can also make it a four two 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 depending on how you yeah. you shape it. But yeah, I would I'd always go with that kind of a setup where there's a bit more flexibility up front. I'd say. Hmm. What, yeah. What's the formation we had against Bosnia? I I, I haven't. I there was a oh we played a three three five two. Uh, so we played a three four three actually. Um, it could it could it could go for back three. I don't think I would say back three. 
is he's only called up four centre backs. Normally, if you're going to go for back three, you'd call up five centre backs because you don't have two on the bench. So I don't think he'll, he'll go for back three, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'd rather play with full backs. I feel like our full backs are quite strong. Like yeah, they have yeah, a lot going so, forward so. as well. I yeah, I feel like but it'd be a also, waste. Also, the, the narrow formation that you play against Syria is useful for players like Esmaili Far, who is a very very attacking fullback. If you've ever seen him play, Esmaili Far is a very good goal scoring right back, similar to Ramin Zayan, and he he loves to get forward. And he's pro- I would say, I would say Esmaili Far is the fastest player in this team, pace wise. I don't think anyone matches him. He's He's honestly, he's rapid. So if he, ever, if he does get a chance to start, it'll be quite an exciting um, uh, day before. An underrated question uh, that we haven't asked in several episodes, guys. Who would we have taken these, um, these set-piece kicks? For me, for me, if someone goes to starting, it'd be him. I think he's the best. Um, I completely agree. I'd say he's the best, yeah. He's the best um, striker of a ball that we have, I think. However, if he's not starting... I'd say Koli Zadeh is very reliable with corners. He's got a good... Um, and he obviously got the assist against Syria for Kanani's first goal. Um, so he's he's very reliable. Also quite like Jafar Salmoni, who does 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 take set pieces for his club, Portimonense in Portugal. Um, I don't really want to see how he's taking corners and free kicks, but he probably will because he's the captain. <laughs> um, but he probably will because he's the captain. So... Um, you know, and Goya D's got a decent strike on him as well. So, we've got a couple of players there. Obviously, we're missing Ramin Razayan, who used to do that quite a lot for us. But Are we, are we, are we safe to say Tarami for penalties? No, I, I don't know, actually. I think, yeah, Tarami for penalties. That's a good or, question. Or, I mean, Osman, he's missed a couple of penalties in his career, but I think Tarami's, you know, he, he wins them and he scores them, you know. He wins them and he scores them. That's a really good question. We haven't, yeah, we haven't covered that before. Um, I think before we go on to fan questions, uh, I know you got some fan questions Arya, for us. Before we move on to that, what are your guys' predictions for the game? Um, obviously, the first game was 2-0. Uh, what do you guys think this game will be? I want to say three just because uh, things will be rocky. They're going to completely dominate, but, you know, just I, I kind of curb my enthusiasm on, on, you know, the finishing of these chances, like what we've seen. So uh, I want to say three, but it could easily be four or five. You know I mean? They really want to lash out their anger, just really uh, yeah. bury the, bury some of these guys and make a statement that, uh, Hey, we're back. We belong to be uh, on top of uh, uh, the, the groups on top of Asia. Mm-hmm. These guys have uh, plenty of statements to make. Yeah. I th- and and I also think- Hong Kong, Sorry. Oh yes, I was going to say um, Hong Kong. A lot of their, a lot of their recent players, uh, I think, as you mentioned earlier before, a lot of them uh, are recent call ups. Like a lot of them are like dual nationals, or you know, we went through that transition phase a few years ago under Carlos Queiroz, where the chemistry wasn't that strong because a lot of them are new players. You know, Ashkan de Jaga and a lot of other players came in, um, so they're probably going through that transition period now, where we've got chemistry going for us massively. Um, so yeah, I completely agree. I think it'll be minimum three nil uh, to us. So it's pretty exciting. What about you, Arya? What do you think? Yeah, I think we'll win four nil. I think we'll we'll, we'll beat them um, comfortably. Um, I just think the players are too hungry at the moment. I think we're gonna we're gonna do really well in in the final third. Um, I don't think the Hong Kong players have obviously trained as much together as as Tobias said. So yeah, I think we'll we'll do well. Well, we'll one thing's that. for sure, though, guys, they, they have to be looking one game at a time. They can't even be thinking about the opponent after Hong Kong. It's Hong Kong first and then the next opponent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. Arya, open fan questions, fan yeah. questions for us. Uh, first one comes from Erfan um, at ERI1806. He asks uh, thoughts on Karim Bogheri's addition to the national team staff uh, as assistant manager. Um, personally, I think he's a good addition in terms of um, keeping like the likes of Kainani and Khaled Zadeh in check because um, they are a little bit um, a little bit childish at times. They try to get a little bit too aggressive in, in their approach to the game. He can kind of um, control that. I don't know if he's going to do anything for us tactically. You know, you won't bring anything like that. But I think from a mentality standpoint, from a sports psychology standpoint, I think he offers a lot in that sense, but that's really it. 
I, I'm, I'm curious, uh, Arya, can, can you speak on the, the fact that there's been a, a few uh, additions recently? Uh, you know, what, what is, uh, what's, uh, I guess, the motivation for these recent additions? So, good question. Uh, Anton Uznik, who was the assistant manager at the start when, when he came in with, with Scotchich, has actually left uh, the national team for personal reasons. Um, so, obviously, Mario... Mario Tot has come in to replace him as assistant manager. He used to be in used to be in Denimo Zagreb for a little while as well. And uh, we brought in a new fitness coach. Um, and we brought in uh, also this guy, um, Kanye Balgari. So it's good that you know we've done that. You know, it's it creates a little bit more uh, specialism. Um, you know, not specialism, but what you call it, specialists in in certain aspects of the game. Rather than just having, you know, a guy who's more jack of all trades kind of thing, you know, you're getting people who are specialists in their own trades. So it's good from that aspect. Um, and I think it just creates a bit better harmony in the, in the national team. Yeah, no, I completely agree. All right. With you all right. Um, Next question. Good additions. Next question comes from uh, Ar- Arjan Kioni. Yes, um, should Ansar Ifard start instead of Osmoon, considering he has one yellow card? So that he would not get suspended for the game against Bahrain. It's a good. It's a good one. Also, Samson, just because you had Purali Ganji in your list, I believe Purali Ganji is actually suspended for the first match because um, he had a, 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 um, too many yellow cards. So I think he was be suspended. So another one that we will miss for that first game. Um, but on this one, I'm going to go with Samson. Yeah, no, that that's a great question that we got. We we haven't talked about you know, the fact of a, a yellow card accumulations. <laughs> we 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 get so caught up in the results of what happened during Wilmot, we forget about that part, right? I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't mind that substitution. Yeah, I mean, there isn't much to say besides I wouldn't mind it because it's. it's I think it's not like we don't know what to expect, yeah. you know. I mean, I don't know if you agree. I think Kove or Ansari Fire are very reliable strikers to come in for either one of them. Yeah, I mean, or or something that might be a bit more controversial is change the formation. Put Salah Asman as a yeah, lone striker. Yeah, you could, you could, could that do that. Before. You could do that. You could do that. He's done that before, and he's a proven striker. He can work by himself. Obviously, he doesn't do that as Zenit with with Juba. But like, if I mean, if if Rodos is up for playing, um, I'd, I'd slot him in there. Obviously, you have got Golizade who could obviously slot in as well. Like, I feel like changing the formation might be better. Obviously, Kavareza and Sarifar the both proven strikers as well um but actually now that now that i'm considering it, i feel like yeah asmund should probably be benched because of the bahrain game especially given that they're at home um even though iran should be at home or whatever um they're going to be at home uh yeah i feel like he should probably take that game out the one against hong kong i feel like i feel like they'll probably do that as well um, all right next question comes uh from uh aria 4n and that's at aria 4n he at four number four n. He asks, considering Abedzadeh's good season at Maritimo as well as his performance against Bosnia, do you think he should start over Bayern? But we've already said this. Um, um, for me, Abedzadeh is a fantastic goalie, and so is Bayern. Simple as that, you know. And whether whoever starts. Um, I think you know they will they'll, they'll do well to start because Nias Man is also a good goalie. You know, so it'll be good uh, competition. Um, all right, moving on. This is a question that I see being kind of brought up recently. I don't really know why, but it does. But I'll ask it anyway. Uh, I'll go to Cena for this first. What do you? Who? Why do you think um, someone like Jalal Hosseini's name is being brought up so much? You know, to get come out of retirement, a guy who's thirty nine years old, um, playing in Paris Police. Why is his name being brought up to get come out of retirement? I think this is pretty normal. Like it happens in quite a few national teams where like the the old generation kind of retires from the national team. But then, you know, w- with with the centre backs, you need kind of a proven formula. You need you need players to cement that position. And obviously with with added experience that that position is is better. It's like one of the only posi- one of the rare positions where Obviously, the older the player gets, the, the 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 more quality they bring to the table. And so, I feel like with the managers transitioning, um, we've had quite a few centre backs 
center back partnerships and there hasn't been like one there hasn't been like one duo where it's they've solidified their their position obviously you've got Hosseini and Pura Ganji um but then obviously you had other players such as like Cheshmi come in and like there's been a lot of alternations in in the center backs so that's why I feel like his name is probably being brought up because he's a proven player obviously he's got a lot of caps for the national team um and he'll he'll probably be able to do a job obviously he's he's playing well and consistently for his club as well that's probably why his name's coming up however i would not be playing him i feel like this is probably the best time to put in and try to find that defensive partnership that will take us to uh the next world cup hopefully when we qualify yeah would you do something if you want to say something <laughs> you think losing to uh uh countries uh smaller than a province uh like Bahrain or, or or losing to Iraq has something to do with uh maybe some whispers being made about that about the the, the good old times of having a more ex- experienced uh, yeah. defense not letting that happen but no nah, I mean no nah, let's be let's be real we, we need a more uh athletic uh defenders uh to develop into the the chemistry that we need uh, it, it's a funny thought. It's not to take away his his fantastic career, but yeah, that question came from Omid G Nine um, on Twitter. Okay, um, last couple of questions coming from Instagram. We got one by actually this is kind of two people asking the same question. So Cass Mensa, Castro, he asks, and also um, Mustafa underscore Mustafa underscore DXB. They're both basically asking about the midfield, you know, and they're both both asking about how there's a lot of players are over 30, like Hai Safi, Vai Daimiri, Kamal Komya Binya, um, you know, and we don't really have any young center midfielders. Um, first and foremost, got to say, Kani Mi and Raf are injured, so I mean, those two probably would have been in the squad, but they're injured, so we have to replace them somehow, and bringing any more experienced players isn't a bad thing. However, I would agree that we probably need to have some younger centre midfielders coming through. If you listen to our interview with um, Ezatullah, he, he was speaking about how the lack of development for, for, for the centre mid in Iran, because of how much of their football tries to be you know getting to the ball to the striker as soon as possible you know it's very it's very uh, difficult for a center mid in Iran to develop like I was saying before a lot one guy who I think is very good who can come in and do that is Yasin Salmoni who plays for Sepahan I think he is a fantastic midfielder who has a real real opportunity to be part of the national team in the coming camps because he is a really, really good player and I do think he can be called up. So we'll look out for that. But do you guys want to add into that? No, you summed up perfectly. Yeah. Nothing more from me. Yeah. Perfect. Um I think that's all the questions. Let me just have a look. I mean I mean we I'm not saying that's all the questions. We had a lot more questions, right? But obviously we've covered a lot of that in our discussion. And if there was any questions that we didn't answer, but you can always ask these questions again on the Twitter space that we will do before the match. So if you want to get your question answered, we'll do that before the match. Oh, uh, and hopefully, hopefully, by the way, Ari, hopefully the tradition continues with uh, with us trying to do that and then finding out that there's a goal scored in the first minute, like that Champions League game with Tara Mia. I wouldn't mind that happening. Yeah, that would be hilarious. <laughs> that would be absolutely hilarious because it did happen to me. I actually missed the goal because I was posting it. On, uh, I was posting the Instagram live, so it's uh, <laughs> yeah. Ever ever since then, our tradition is we're going to stop it five minutes before the match <laughs> start because otherwise we or maybe or maybe maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should just do that. Maybe I should always miss the first five minutes of the game. <laughs> tradition, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, if you if you do want to tune in for that, uh, obviously follow us on Twitter, and obviously if you want to find out about it, follow us on Instagram and Facebook while you're at it. Um, but boys, I'm going to wrap up there. I feel like it's been a really good episode. Um, so thank you so much for sending in those questions, by the way, everyone. And thank you so much for listening to this episode of Gold Bazan. As I said before, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and also subscribe to us on Twitter. Subscribe to us on Twitter. That's wrong. Subscribe to us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Amazon, CastBox. We are basically everywhere. 
And obviously visit our website as well if you're interested to see what's going on there, golbazanpodcast.com. So thank you so much, Samson and Aria, for joining me. Um, and I guess we'll see you on the Twitter spaces very soon. Hello, everyone. My name is Saida Zatole, and you're listening to the Golbazan Podcast.